Hey, I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm a little nervous doing this video today. What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and today we're gonna do something a lot different than anything that we usually do. I wanna tell you guys a prison story and at the same time, I wanna draw cartoons with this. I wanna draw to explain the, the story. So I guess I wanna do like a prison story draw my life is the best way to put this. And again, bear with me. I'm gonna be kinda of nervous doing this because I've never done anything like this before. We've done live streams in the past where I've drawn cartoons, you guys have made suggestions. I've drawn those cartoons, but this is gonna be the first time that I'm actually trying to convey a story to you guys while trying to illustrate it at the same time. But it's with mentioning all of that that let me go ahead and tell you guys what we're gonna be drawing and talking about today. I wanna to draw my prison life. I want to draw my tattoo prison life, part of it. This is gonna be like part one. I wanna to try to illustrate this prison story of what it was like first getting locked up and also getting introduced to jailhouse slash prison tattooing. So that's the story that I'm gonna share with you guys today. I'm gonna to be drawing some cartoons to convey this story as well. So, hope we do all right here, Joe. I hope we do all right. I keep messing with this paper. Y'all can tell I'm nervous. Boy, if this was a police interrogation, I'd be guilty already. So I guess I want to first begin this story talking about what it was like getting locked up for the very first time. At the age of 18 years old, this would be the first time that old Joe, well back then I wasn't old Joe, I was young Joe, but this would be the first time that I was getting locked up. And you know, the very first time that you get locked up, you ain't going to have no idea what to expect. You are only going to know what you've seen on TV, what you've heard, maybe you know people who've been locked up. If you're getting locked up, you're definitely running in circles where... You got some people who are getting locked up in your circle. So maybe they've told you some things. You got no idea what to expect yourself and you never will until you actually experience it for the very first time. And if you've never experienced it and you're watching this video, kudos to you. And I hope that this is something that you never do have to experience. But back during this time, I was first getting locked up and I had no idea what to expect. Here I was, 18 year old Joe, getting locked up on a grand larceny charge. And I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was. I was a little intimidated, I was scared, I had no idea what to expect. And you walk into the cell block, the very first cell block that you're going into, it's gonna have a distinct smell, it's gonna smell like musk, it's gonna smell like funk, it's gonna smell like off-brand, like school cleaner or something, something like that. You'll never forget the sight, the sounds, and the smells. Those are things that will always uh, stick with you. So as I'm telling you guys this, I'm kinda drawing like, I'm gonna have like a scared version of myself, a young little version of myself, first walking into the cell block and trying to figure out what to do. When you first get into that cell block, you you have no idea what to do. You get in there and you're kind of like in awe. You're kind of like, you know, going to an amusement park for the first time, except there ain't nothing fun about this experience. The amusement park, yeah, there'll be, that'll be fun. This ain't gonna be fun at all. And you're going to be seeing some mean looking characters. That goes without saying. There's going to be some dudes in there that are going to see you coming into that cell block for the very first time, a young, scared kid. And they're going to pick up on that immediately. It's like sharks. When they smell blood in the water, they are going to pick up on that immediately. So this cartoon is going to convey that first encounter with that first tough guy. Definitely going in there, running across that first dude who's definitely going to try you. Because I don't know why it is, but when you first get locked up, I mean, that's something that's guaranteed to happen. And like, here I am, this young little version of myself, little pimply faced Joe right here. And I'm just trying to shake hands. I'm just trying to shake somebody's hand. Hi, how you doing? My name's Joe. I'm 18 years old. I've never done this before. It's a pleasant place though, isn't it? This is, it's not so bad. It ain't, it can't possibly be like what they make it out to be like on TV, on Oz and on, on prison. It can't be like, oh, oh, it's way worse, huh? And we don't shake hands in here, huh? Yeah, okay, I'm learning, I'm learning. I've only been in here for five minutes, but I'm learning we don't shake hands. All right, bet. And you know, that's something for real. Guys won't shake hands while locked up, they'll dap you up. And a big reason for that is because of germs. A lot of guys will not wash their hands, whether after getting done using the restroom or doing even worse things. So ain't no handshakes. It's definitely gonna be all pound pieces. Hey, pound it up. Let's go ahead and title this, uh, Joe's first day in jail. And I gotta say something nice to this big fellow that I'm going up trying to shake his hand. I, I have to say something nice. Again, I, I've never done this, so I wanna make as many friends as I can as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna say something like, hello, kind sir. My name is Joe. Keep it short and sweet to the point. Let's go ahead and put a little cartoon bubble around this sucker right here. That doesn't look that great, but that's okay. Hopefully we'll clean that up when we get to some ink. 
And this guy's response, I'm not going to make it a cartoon bubble. A lot of times when you do cartooning, you could have the beginning of the cartoon and a word bubble at the top and then in quotations down below. Uh, this is like a cartoon style, maybe format. I'm going to have this guy's response. And obviously by this, what we've got so far, this guy's definitely not looking like a people person. He's not looking like he's trying to make friends with old pimply faced Joe right here. This guy's going to be saying something along the lines of, shut up, beep. And, you know, when you do cartooning, if you don't want to cuss, you'll use like a bunch of uh, emojis or, or symbols. So we got an at sign, pound sign. We could put a, a dollar sign and we'll put a little space shuttle right here. I always like using a space shuttle. Shut up, beep. Have you ever washed? Okay, I, I can see where this is going. This guy is definitely going to be trying to, he's definitely trying me. Have you ever washed a grown man's underwear. Have I ever watched a grown man's underwear? Let's make it even worse though. I mean, this is my first day. You gotta imagine, they trying to intimidate the mess out of me. You ever watched a grown man's underwear with your toothbrush? Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no, that's not what this dude's at. Hey, what you trying to... I'm gonna go get my toothbrush. I'm not gonna say whether or not this actually did happen or not, but this makes for a damn good cartoon. I wanna emphasize and you know definitely showcase that that first day is gonna be probably one of the most intimidating, stress-filled, memorable days that you'll ever deal with getting locked up. You're never gonna forget that. You're never gonna forget your first day. So now, let's have some fun. Man, I'm getting graphite all over myself. I'm gonna be looking, I'm gonna be dirty by the end of this. All right, so we've penciled out this cartoon. And you know, another thing about doing this video right here is this kind of shows you guys how I do my, my cartoons. I always start with a pencil sketch. I, I like to get the idea of the cartoon, what it's gonna say, get everything mapped out, and then we go straight to Sharpie marker. So you guys are about to see the magic take place right now. And I know this looks crazy right this second, but hopefully we're gonna make this look a lot better. So let's go ahead and start with my nose. Then let's go ahead and put my mouth right here and my little neck. I ain't got no neck. I'm, I'm, I'm young Joe right here. So young Joe ain't gonna have much of a neck. And let's put some eyes. I'm looking a little timid. So we're gonna put some big old dots right there. Now back then I didn't have hair. When I was younger, I used to keep a pretty low profile haircut. So I'm gonna try to, try to illustrate that the best that I can. That doesn't look all that bad. And then we got a little, little pimply action Joe. Or that could be sweat because I was definitely sweating this. Now I was definitely scared, so I'm shaking. I got all these little sweat beads coming up off of me. I got my little jail issue on. Oh, and by the way, during this time in my life, I had no tattoos. And again, this is all about how I got introduced to tattooing while locked up. So, of course, during this time, I really didn't have any tattoos at all. Now at this jail, they had these little two-piece smocks, is that the right way to say it, that you would wear? It was like a top and then your pants. Got my hand extended right here, just trying to, just trying to make friends. And it's not going well for me on this first day. Draw some more little squiggly lines to represent the fact that I was nervous. I'm shaking, y'all. Joe, that doesn't really look much like you. Well, you never saw me when I was 18 years old now, did you? Who's to say for real if this looks like me or not? But anytime I draw a cartoon version of myself, it very rarely ever looks like me. All right, so we got me right there. Now we got our big man. Let's go ahead and put his big old nose right there and he's mad. He's just mad as hell. I done came into his cell block uh, trying to make friends. So he's got some big old eyes and they, they right there on me. And I always draw my convicts with their bald head. Big old baldy. And he's shaking too. He's got spit flying out of his mouth and he's not shaking because he's nervous. He's shaking because he's ready to He's ready to introduce me to the to the jail life. We gotta make this dude look like the big bad dude that he is. His neck was crazy, he had these crazy shoulder muscles and bong. Oh yeah, this guy looks like he's about to pop out of the shirt. This is a good representation right here. All right, he's got his hands on his hips. He ain't playing no games. You got a big dude in, in jail or prison with his hands on his hips. He's either out of breath or he's ready to do some damage. We're also gonna write convict across his shirt just to make it that much more evident what this guy is. He's a convict and I'm a fish. We got some little bars back here in the background just to really give it that jail feel. All right, let's go ahead and put some little, 
little dots on this guy, give him that little weathered look. And we're gonna put some little squiggly lines to represent all these tattoos, because he's a convict. There ain't no way in hell you're a convict and you ain't covered in tattoos. In fact, when you fill out your convict resume, if you're not covered in tattoos and you don't have sleeves that speak for themselves, you ain't no convict. Joe, you ain't really got all that many tattoos. Well then you know what? Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I'm really not that much of a convict. I'm a cartoonist, a cartoon convict. I changed the wording on this a little bit. It says, shut up, beep. You ready to wash a grown man's underwear with your toothbrush? I think that sounds a lot better. That's what it was like first getting locked up. Pretty memorable experience. Running into these big bad dudes. Being scared out of my mind. Not fitting in at all. I've never been here and that, that emanates out of a person. No matter how tough you try to act, Guys are going to be able to see through that. They are. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was apparent when I first got locked up. Now, something else to throw into this as well. That Look, that first day, of course, you're going to be seeing guys. They're going to be coming up to you. you it's, it's just going to be a chaotic experience. You're going to have to figure it out the best way that you can. I can tell you one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to have anybody come up to you and then you try to hit the biggest guy. That... Uh, that prison myth, whenever you get locked up, you got to walk up and hit the biggest dude. That's definitely not the right way to go about things. That can go wrong for you in a lot of ways. If somebody is not absolutely just disrespecting you so blatantly and in front of everybody, then there's no reason to do that. But if that's the case, you might have to take that L. Or who knows, maybe you'll get the W. And if you get the W, well, then your first day is going to be in the top 2% of how people's time first getting locked up will go, meaning that they'll get immediate respect. But you definitely gotta navigate your course with some caution and just figure it out for yourself. For everybody, it's gonna be different. But not only are you gonna be seeing all of these tough, mean guys, you will eventually be meeting people. And you might meet people who are just like you, guys who are getting locked up for the first time, just as scared as you are. You might run into guys like that as well. But not only are you going to be meeting folks, seeing folks, having people come up to you, you're also going to be seeing other things that take place in jail. And one of those things is what I'm getting ready to uh, show you guys with this next cartoon, and that is commissary. You're going to be seeing guys, if you've never been locked up before and you don't even know what commissary is, I'm going to be honest with you. At 18 years old, when I first got locked up, I didn't know anything about what commissary was. There wasn't no YouTube. There wasn't no locked up. These shows weren't even out yet. There weren't no prison related channels where I could learn these things. So imagine getting locked up for the first time and not really knowing nothing about this and then seeing guys walking around with a Pepsi or a honey bun. Damn, we locked up. I didn't know you could get that. Where'd they get that from? Hey, that comes at child. You're gonna learn. And if you're in a situation where you don't have money, you don't have Anybody out there who's going to send you money, maybe you were like me and you were completely in the way, you get locked up with not a dollar in your pocket, and then your family doesn't want to send you any money, you're going to learn that commissary is a luxury, and it's a luxury that's not afforded to every prisoner. You're going to see guys who make commissary. You're going to wonder, man, how is this dude making commissary? This dude is 20 times worse than the type of person that I am. How is he able to have these zoom zooms and wham whams. You're gonna see some crazy things. And this next cartoon is gonna be like a little representation of just that, right? And so what I'm gonna draw right here is you got two prisoners. They're sitting at a table because in some cell blocks and housing units, they will have tables. Tables where guys can play chess and cards and other things or where they can cook their commissary food up at and meal up, make them a swole, make them a spread. And that'll be something else that'll amaze you as well. Seeing some of these things that these guys are creating. And we're gonna draw this just real basic. I just want this to look like a bunch of something on a table and it's gonna have like a little smell. And these guys are just sitting here having a grand old time. Loving life locked up because they done got them somebody out there sending them some money. She could be 400 pounds. She could be a he. It doesn't matter. Nobody in here knows any different. All they know is they're seeing these guys and they eating real good at these tables. We're going to call this one prison commissary. We've got two dudes sitting here. They're mealing up. They're having a great old time. They love being locked up. They could be old heads. I don't really know what they are just yet, but... They're sitting here at these tables, mealing up, and here's old Joe back here in the background. We gotta make sure we emphasize just how real small I was. We gotta really, like my stomach sucked in, touching my back type small. Because you know, when I first started getting locked up, I was not making commissary. My family weren't gonna send me no money. What you mean you need money while you locked up for so you can get some treats, some rewards? 
Man, you locked up. You ain't in nowhere where you deserve no rewards. We ain't, we ain't gonna be giving you no star stickers for no good jobs. You are locked up. You better eat that jail food or whatever it is that they're feeding you. So Joe didn't do too good at first. And I had to walk around and watch all of these other guys who were just living the dream. Locked up, living well. They didn't even have to eat their trays. Some of these guys would do spiteful things as well. You know, they would take their tray and instead of giving that tray to a hungry man such as what I was, they would take that tray and walk over to the trash can and throw it away. Waste jail food. Which back then was something I was I was okay with. Man, why are you gonna throw that tray? Man, I'm hungry. I ain't got no honey buns. Prison commissary. Without it, you'll starve. Eh, that's pretty simple. Let's keep this one pretty simple. All right, so we got a whole bunch of stuff going on right here. You know, I, I wondered like if this is even amazing to anybody, how I've got all of these crazy lines that don't even really, uh, boy, this is, this is a sketch to the fullest. But let's see if we can put this little puzzle together and make this look real good. All right, so we got this dude right here and he's just happy as can be. A little hair, a little eyeball action. He's just eyeing that food down. Yum, yum. I ain't got to eat that meat rock or that jailhouse meatloaf. I'm sitting here eating all this good stuff. I want to put like little food bits all over them. It probably doesn't look like little food bits, but that's what I was going for. So I learned something a long time ago when it came to cartooning, and that was less can be more. Crazy how a couple of lines can come to represent so much in the end. All right, there's your little stool that you're sitting on right there. And here's the table. All right, so we got some food right here and we're gonna put a little more food right here and that's some more food. And you know, this is a this is a swole right here. It might not look like a swole, but that's what this represents, prison commissary. This guy, he is super stoked. Maybe this is the first time he's ever made the store and he's been locked up for, this is his fifth time coming to jail. So he's stoked, he's like, yes. That trick you told me to tell, tell that girl it worked. And now I'm able to sit right here with you and eat. So he's doing pretty good too. He's, he's at the table. He's mealing up. Now I'm sitting back here like, what the hell? I'm starving. I feel like I haven't eaten decently since I've been in here. And I've only been in here for a couple of hours. It's not looking good. Somebody, please feel sorry for Joe. Young Joe. Help a brother out. Toss him a, a meat rock tray or something. I'm grabbing them. I'm grabbing my stomach. I got them hunger pains, y'all. I'm ready to steal something at this point. I'm ready. I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm not doing good. There ain't nothing like being locked up watching other guys eat, and you ain't got nothing to eat. That, you know, you're already gonna be hungry enough. Then throw in the fact that you gotta watch other people eat, and they ain't gonna give you nothing if you ain't got no friends and you're new. You ain't getting nothing. If you ain't got no hustle, you ain't got nothing for sale. We're gonna have this little smell coming right up into them nostrils. Bung! Oh, it's beating me up. That little squeaky little line represents that smell right there. Prison commissary. Without it, you'll starve. All right, uh, pimply old Joe, we ain't doing too good. So these guys, they got like a little food all over their face and stuff. They, duh. Food on his shirt. Mm -mm -mm. These guys, they're doing big things. So let's go ahead and move on to how the tattooing became introduced. And I want to go back to what I mentioned at the beginning. When you first go in and you meet people, you're going to meet the bullies, you're going to meet the gangs, you're going to meet all sorts of different people. But the tattooing would first, I would first get introduced to tattooing while locked up through another young guy. And this young guy would end up being my celly. Now, when I, when I met this dude, I mean, he was my cellie. He was a young guy. He was just like me we, uh, for the fact that he was young. He was locked up for some minor stuff. I had a grand larceny. But he wanted to learn how to tattoo. So it wasn't so much the fact that it was me uh, wanting to learn to tattoo. It was this guy, my cellie. He wanted to learn to tattoo. And I can't remember his name to save my life. But it would be through him learning and experimenting on me where I would eventually start to get into tattooing. But this is basically just my introduction to prison and jail tattooing. So through this celly of mine, you know, one day he asked me about a tattoo. Hey man, you want to get a tattoo? 
And I had been dealing with this dude for just a little while now, and I never knew anything about tattooing with this guy. And if I can remember correctly, I think he heard about this or he knew somebody who did something like this, but he didn't really have a solid idea on how to do this. He just had an idea. He had just heard about it. So I want to kind of draw real quick uh, me and the conversation between me and this dude. Again, mind you, two young dudes in the cell, and he's telling me, hey, you want a tattoo? Do you tattoo? No, but I want to learn. And if you'll let me do this tattoo for free, then uh, then maybe that can help me to learn. Well, I didn't really know what a, a, a guinea pig was at this point, but I guess I was about to find out. Now, one thing to keep in mind about learning to tattoo while locked up, this is something that's really crazy. You know, when you get locked up, it's going to be very rare that anybody ever teaches you how to tattoo. If you're, if you're in a place where there's other guys who are tattooing and you want to learn, it is going to be seldom to none cases where a guy is going to teach you. And the reason for that is why would he teach you? If a guy is already in that cell block or housing unit tattooing, why would he teach you to tattoo so you could become his competition? That's the reality of the situation. And a lot of guys, myself included, and this cellmate of mine, this other young guy, would end up learning and trying to learn how to tattoo legitimately through trial and error. So I've drawn up this cartoon right here, and basically here's my cellie, the guy I can't remember. Here's cartoon Joe, oh, young Joe right here. And the cellie saying to me, hey, you want a tattoo? Me saying something along the lines of, I don't know, man, uh, you any good at this? And him saying in response, never done one before. But tell you what, to sweeten the pot, how about I do one for free? Oh, yeah, this sounds like a great idea. What could go wrong with this? Now, I want to ask you guys something. If it was you who was in this situation, would you go for this? Would you do this? Would you let someone learn to tattoo by experimenting and practicing on you? I've done it. So if you say that you would, it's okay. Joe's done it too. All right, we got old cartoon Joe right here. Now, I got my little line across my eyes right here because I'm skeptical. I got I to gotta draw that skeptical look. And that line across the eyes right there, that little slanted eye thing, that kind of represents that, or at least that's what I'm hoping it does. And again, I got no tattoos up until this point. None whatsoever. And I don't remember what exactly it was that sold me on this idea. You know, how hard could it be? Maybe that's what I was thinking. Jail tattoo. How hard can this be? Anybody could probably do this. And I'm sure I was thinking at the same time, I'm going to be learning this as well. So as this guy's tattooing me, you know, maybe I can learn too. I kind of drew this dude as like a little dumpy fat kid. And I can't honestly remember if he was fat or if he wasn't. But, you know, we got this guy right here to represent my celly. So what this is right here that I'm drawing is, this is the number two pencil. And I've over-exaggerated the thing hanging off the end of this, but this is supposed to represent the staple. And I wanted to draw that thing just looking all crooked and crazy right there because uh, that's very important to this story. This very first tattoo, this very first tattoo I would ever get while locked up, I need to really emphasize the needle, which was a staple, but we're going to get to that. And again, th that's why I drew it looking like this long, uh, basically like the corkscrew thing that you would use to pop a uh, pop a cork out of a wine bottle and then we're gonna draw like this little squiggly line right here that kind of just represents like the timidness of you know his delivery with the sales pitch this guy didn't come up to me like do you want a tattoo because i am the guy welcome to jail you couldn't have been bunked with a better person you could not have gotten a better celly because i'm the tattoo man no this guy was not confident at all. He was like, hey, I think I heard about some guys using a staple out of one of those daily bread prayer books that they hand out at church. Uh, you know, maybe we can get one of those staples. I'll give you a tattoo. I've never done it before. But if you let me do it, I'll do it for free. You any good? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the wording on this. Um, I've actually never done one before. Oh, you've never tattooed before, but you're asking me if I want a tattoo. You're telling me that you heard about how to tattoo. Let's draw some little acne bumps on this dude, too, because he definitely was ate up. And I'm going to draw just a little bit of hair, again, to represent that I was there. I mean, represent that I was young. That rhymed. I was just trying to be cute. You guys let me know what you're thinking about this thus far, too. We're drawing up a cartoon storm in this video. Yeah, so this cartoon definitely represents the uh, getting... Getting, a, getting acquainted with my first jailhouse tattoo artist. 
I don't think that I can even refer to him as that. There's no way I can call this guy a tattoo artist. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just going through and putting a couple of little cartoon imitation bricks in the background to make it look like the block wall. Just adds a little bit of depth to the cartoon. I always do this. Anytime that I draw a prison cartoon, I've always got these little imitation cartoon bricks, these little clip art cartoon bricks. Now, you guys have seen me change the wording on two cartoons thus far, and I, I just need that to showcase like, I'm just coming up with these as we go. When it comes to captioning a cartoon, that can oftentimes be harder than drawing the cartoon. Like trying to get the right punchline for the cartoon. And don't get me wrong, I know these cartoons aren't like, you know, you're falling out of your chair laughing at these. I know that's not what these are, but I want these to convey a point. I want these to convey the point and correlate with, you know, the story that I'm sharing with you all. Hey, you want a tattoo? You any good? Um, I've actually never done one before. I'm sold. Where do I sign up? I mean, you've never done one before. I get to be your first? Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and do this. What could possibly go wrong with that? It would be through my first cellmate, this other young kid, that I would become introduced to tattooing while locked up. And with this introduction would also come my very first jail tattoo, which is actually this one here. I've, I've shared this with you guys before. There's a lot to talk about with, with this story. Uh, when this first was done, before I even get to the cartoon, uh, this is a J. The spade's supposed to represent an A. There's some people who, who have passed away who are really close to me that I've got tattooed in here as well. And then the Y. It was just supposed to be J. The word J. My nickname when I was younger. J Money. Uh, J Smooth. J whatever. When this young celly of mine first did this tattoo, he only was able to complete the J. Now, mind you, this has been gone over since that very first time. He was only able to complete the J and the spade, and there was this little squiggly line that's still there. And I don't think that you guys can really see that little squiggly line right there. I, it was just a design. I, we got this out of a magazine. We saw it in a magazine. I saw the lettering in a magazine. And believe me when I tell you, it looked a lot better in the magazine than it looks on my arm. But the line between the J and the spade is really what I wish I could show you guys up close because that was about how good the tattoo was done. You would imagine that if you've got a straight line that you're trying to tattoo. Let me do it with a marker. This is not going to be a cartoon, but this is going to be a demonstration. So here's, here's the line that you're supposed to tattoo. And mind you, this kid learning... You know, he wasn't following this line too well. He, in fact, he wasn't even, the line was just there. So when he's tattooing, he's tattooing like this. And, and this is pick and poke. This is with a staple and a pencil. And we've made ink out of graphite from that pencil. You know, I would later learn that, you know, that line is there for a reason. You were supposed to be right up on that line doing your tattoo work. Well, this kid, not only did he learn, I learned, I guess, the painful way. You know, he's doing this line like this. He's following the line, folks, but he's not on the line at all. He is, like, thinking that he's a little tattoo machine right here, and this is how this tattoo would end up coming. A bunch of dots all over my body. Uh, the ones that did stick. That's where the tattoo is supposed to be. Uh, that right there, folks, is definitely having no idea what you're doing at all. We're not even stretching the skin here. You know, you were supposed to stretch that skin, and you were supposed to be right up on that line. You're supposed to be right up on that line. See how I'm right up on that line? I might have got off it a little bit, but I'm right up on that line. We weren't doing none of that, or he wasn't. This guy was like a machine gun. Bung, 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 Boy, look like buckshot on my arm. That ain't no tattoo. However, before we would get to what would end up looking like buckshot and a lot of scar tissue, you know, we have to actually do the tattoo. And that's the next cartoon that I want to share with you guys. And this was a very painful experience. And notice how I always draw my line. That's just my starting line. So what I'm trying to show you guys right here is insanity. I'm trying to show you me losing my damn mind. And this is all over the place, but trust and believe, we're going to pull this back. So what I've tried to draw right here is what it was like getting this first tattoo and the excruciating pain that I went through. Not only was this guy not stretching the skin, not only did this guy have absolutely no idea what he was doing, and I'm just as much at fault for this situation as he is because I let him do it. But one thing about it, before I even ink this, I got to put these words on here. So the words that I put on here, it says, oh my God, it feels like you're sawing my arm off. Did you even sharpen that needle? Yeah, 
You know, this guy would actually get knee deep into this tattoo. He would get pretty far into this thing. Uh, blood everywhere. Blood everywhere. Because it wasn't tattooing. This thing was puncturing the skin, y'all. This thing was like, uh, boy, it was not sharpened at all. And you know, when I asked him, did you even sharpen the needle? Wait a minute, I was supposed to sharpen something? Oh yeah, Joe, good job. Good job. You've let the uh, you've let the new guy perform open heart surgery on your arm. All right, let's see if we can salvage these crazy lines. We'll try to put a little tongue hanging out right here. This is me looking absolutely losing my mind. And also, I'm trying to get away. I am definitely trying to get away. Like, what's that? What's that? That airline need to get away fast. I'm throwing up gang signs. I don't even know what I'm doing. I cannot. I'm losing control of all motor functions at this point. That's how painful this is. Oh my God, it feels like you're sawing my arm off. Did you even sharpen that needle? I think this is a good, uh, this is actually a good rendition of what this whole experience was like. Word bubbles. They are just as hard to draw as coming up with the caption. Those are the two hardest things about doing cartoons. The word bubble and the caption. And also making sure that you write your words as close to straight as you possibly can. That's actually not easy to do. I was supposed to sharpen something? Yeah, you was. The needle, the staple that we got out of the daily bread that they give out at church. Because they have the soft aluminum staples in them. I mean, what you mean? You told me you knew how to do this. You told me you watched it or you heard about it from somebody else. And now you have butchered my arm. Now, folks, mind you, I said that when he did this tattoo, he was only able to get through uh, the makeshift J and the spade for the A. He wasn't able to get to the Y. And you might ask why. See what I did right there? Oh, that was clever. You might wonder to yourself why I wasn't able to get completed. And the reason for that was because... Uh, what I'm getting ready to share with you next about this story. When he did the J, the spade for the A, you know, to anybody who tattoos, even if you're doing stick and poke, pick and poke, however you want to refer to it, to anybody who does this and has got some experience with it, it's not going to take all that long. It could take a little while. It could take an hour, maybe two hours. But this guy, it took him like almost all day. All day of puncturing and stabbing with a blunt object. Mind you, a blunt object, something that wasn't sharpened, something that should have been sharpened that wasn't. It took this dude like all day digging up in my arm. And I don't even want to think about how much blood I probably lost in the process of this. I mean, I'm being a little dramatic when I say that, but trust and believe me, I was bleeding all day long. This thing was just an open wound that was constantly getting messed with. Folks, we wouldn't be able to complete the tattoo. And... It brings us to the end of this story, this cartoon video story. Uh, I've got to hurry up. We've got 10% battery left on the overhead camera. And the reason we wouldn't be able to complete the tattoo is because um, not only was this a blunt object that I was getting tattooed with, it wasn't a clean one either. And I would end up getting sick. I would. I would get a mean old staph infection from this sucker. Uh, one thing that you got to do is you got to make sure that you're using clean stuff while doing any type of tattooing while locked up. And the, and the messed up situation about it is, is it is not easy to get stuff clean. You want to do good work on people and you also want to make sure that you're using the sterilest equipment that you can. And when you're locked up, that's not something that's easy to do. So I'm drawing me bedridden and I'm racing against the battery on the GoPro. As if there wasn't already enough pressure. I would end up getting a mean old staph infection from this where they would actually have to take me to medical. To the medical infirmary where I would have to be uh, put in isolation, medical isolation, for like 14 days. So basically that's what I'm showcasing right here is a sick old Joe. I'm all messed up. What I'd like to do real quick if I can is just throw that celly back there who damn near killed me. I want to put him in this cartoon as well, because it wouldn't be right if I didn't. So we're going to put him back here, uh, you know, feeling feeling sad, feeling like, damn, I'm sorry, dude, your arm almost fell off. It's all my fault. I feel bad about this situation, too. And he's going to be saying, uh, 
I'm going to have to work on that caption. We're going to have to come back to that. I feel like we're on one of them cooking shows where you're like racing against the clock. All right. Let's hurry up and draw this. I, I'm all banged up, y'all. Joe is in medical isolation right now. There's the pillow. There's the bunk. There's my arm. There's the blanket. I'll say that's the ground right there. Then we got like one of them little EKG machines, whatever that thing is, your heart rate. Put some little knobs on that sucker. We got the saline bag right there. Okay. And you know, I wouldn't ever see this Sully again, but for the sake of this, we're gonna end this on a happy ending where he's apologetic for damn near costing me my arm. You know, because I got moved out of there and then taken to medical. So he never, you know, would say sorry. He would never get a chance to. And it's just as much my fault as it was his fault that this happened. I allowed this to happen. But I'd like to think that, you know, he was apologetic for this. So he would probably say something if he did get the chance to apologize. He would probably say something along the lines of, tell you what. I'll give you half off your next tattoo. Oh, that sounds like a great deal, considering I'm already almost half off because my arm almost fell off. Um, now, I said that I got sick. I ended up getting a staph infection, and for those of you who don't know what that is, uh, that's some thing that definitely travels around in jail. It can be spread from... And you can definitely catch it from having open wounds. And a tattoo ain't nothing more than a big old open wound, folks. Forgive me for rushing. We're almost out of time on the battery. I can't believe I got this drawn up. Oh my God, I just wrinkled the paper. I hate when I wrinkle the paper on cartoons. So this is me laying in the medical infirmary where I wouldn't have contact with this guy. But, you know, I would like to believe that if I did have contact with him, you know, he would, he would definitely apologize for this. And he would probably say something along the lines of, sorry about your arm. Tell you what, I'll give you half off your next tattoo. We didn't even get a chance to finish the first tattoo. I hope I did okay with this, folks. And if this was a little bit rough around the edges, please forgive me because this is the first time that I'm experimenting with anything like this. And this is major multitasking at its finest. I mean, look how much graphite I got on my... I'm pretty dirty from this. This is multitasking at its finest, trying to draw and, you know, think about what a cartoon should say, all the while trying to share a story with you guys. You know, I was 18 years old getting locked up in a situation that I had never experienced before. And you go in there and you see all sorts of things that you'll, you're not used to. You see bullies, you see gangs, you see guys that you might be able to relate to and rock with. You hope that you see guys like that. You see dudes mealing up, living extravagantly in jail, in prison. It's the most ridiculous thing that you'll see, but you will see it. And it was during this time when I would first become introduced to tattooing in jail, which would ultimately lead to tattooing in prison. And this first introduction would come from the very first jail tattoo that I got that didn't even get finished. It, this thing wouldn't get finished till years later while I was in prison with a prison tattoo gun at that. And it would be this first introduction to prison tattooing where I would get tattooed or try to get tattooed with a staple doing stick and poke work that wasn't even sharpened, a blunt object that would be dug in so much and would be so unsanitary at the same time that I would end up getting sick from this situation and end up having to go to medical isolation for 14 days with a staph infection, with my arm completely broken out in bumps. You know what, I actually forgot to draw all the little bumps all over my body. I need to add that real quick. I hope you can see the little stars that I drew floating around my head like I had just gotten knocked out and all the little dots all over my arm and on my face right here. I was, I was messed up from this. I really was. And it was definitely a learning experience. An introduction that came with a, a monster lesson. And that lesson was, you know, if you're gonna learn how to tattoo, one, nobody's gonna teach you, you're gonna have to learn on your own. In most cases, don't get me wrong, not all cases will be like that. Some, some folks will get lucky and somebody will teach them. But that won't go for most everybody else. You're gonna have a lot of trial and errors with that. And if you aren't using a properly sharpened instrument with the proper ink, and something that is sanitized, and if you really just don't know what you're doing overall, it's only gonna lead to disaster. And that is exactly how my introduction to prison tattooing began. An absolute disaster. 
Hey, look, folks, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about incorporating these cartoons with the prison story. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world, never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace!